Hey, yeah, I hope you're well. Just come to the park again to do a video that's been going around my head for a while. It's all about social traits and how to socialise. Now, the current format that most people socialise with is this one over here. Dodgy drawings again, I know. <laughs> Where, yes, these are two people actually socialising. And the reasons they're socialising, fundamentally, is to understand how each other's think, how each other thinks, to make the behaviours or the actions of each other predictable. Okay, so what they're trying to do is ascertain whether you're predictable to me or not. And the fundamental essence driving that, the emotion driving that, is are they friend or foe? So fundamentally, the, if you like, the outcome of many of today's social traits is are you friend or foe? And I know you're friend or foe by making by me understanding how you think so that your behaviour is predictable to me. Okay? Now that's quite binary, social coding, because you're either a friend or a foe. You're either accepted by me or rejected by me. So it's quite binary, it's quite brutal. And of course what happens is, is let's say you're talking to somebody, they're different to you, they think differently to you, you have difficulty understanding each other's behaviours, you're not predictable to each other, so you become a foe. But effectively, you know, in these days and days, the word's rejection. My lovely bells in my park, hopefully I'll just carry on. And because we are social animals, each rejection hurts. So what we do is we recover our sense of self, who we are, feel better, and then we go and seek acceptance again. We're looking to be accepted. If, we, if we're not very good at doing the social codes, or we think differently, or we make a mistake at doing the social codes, we run the risk of rejection again, which hurts, and we recover, and we go back round that cycle. And each time we go back round that cycle, it hurts more and more, and takes longer to recover and recover. So what many of us do is to, if we're stuck in that cycle, we either redouble our efforts to seek acceptance, or we take control of the rejection process by behaving in such a horrible way people get rejected anyway. So we're effectively saying, stuff you, I don't want to be your friend, go away. Or the other alternative is to get control of the rejection process. That can be translated as being a bully, or being the leader of a gang, or of an organisation even. <laughs> it's not saying all leaders <laughs> uh, are, suffer from rejection, but they are in control of the rejection process because they're defining who gets accepted and who doesn't. Okay, those are those ways. Um, now I, because I'm on the autistic spectrum, um, and I think differently, so if we go back to these drawings again, because I think differently to people, it's actually very, very hard for me to socialise this way, because I always meet people who are different to me. Which makes it a real challenge for me to always try and socialise so that I become a friend and never a foe. So what I did was realise, okay, those social traits and that cycle are always going to be difficult for me to do, and I'm always carrying the pressure, an intense pressure, of being accepted or rejected. I didn't like that, so what I've done is developed a different set of social traits, which I'm saying here, and these social traits are about me understanding myself more, making myself predictable to myself. Um, you could say it's about accepting myself and not rejecting myself, it's about being myself. And then the idea is, what's happened, what works for me anyway, the more confident I am in who I am and what I stand for, then the more likely, bells again, sorry, <laughs> then what I do is I attract people to me who like me for who I am, okay? My friends are people who like me for who I am. They don't, there's, no, there's no acceptance rejection process, they just spend time with me, I spend time with them because we like them for who they are. There's no agenda to change, there's no agenda to recept, accept or reject. We just like each other for who we are. And we do things together because they're fun. 
as a result of, you know, once the, pre so the pressure of rejection has been removed from me and from them, because we're just liking each other who we are, so we can laugh a lot more and enjoy a lot more experiences with each other. Okay? So what that results in is I get a much more diverse set of friends, because my friends don't long, no longer need to think like me. They just accept each other for who we are. So it's much more diverse, and I can have many more as well to share experiences with. Okay. And then what I find is, is that each conversation I have with people is a way for me to improve myself. So if I have a conversation with somebody and they say, what about this? I immediately then go, hmm, hang on a sec. I just need to develop myself to improve who I am and what I am. So the whole process becomes a sort of self-improving process. And then when I do get rejected, normally it's by people playing those social codes. It doesn't hurt me anymore. What happens is, is I just see it as a nudge to get me to a better place. It's a way for me to learn more about myself and get to a better place. So, because my friends will like me for who I am and I'll like them for who they are. So now I can laugh a lot, constantly develop myself as a human being and have a lot of fun. And these are the social traits that Respect Exchange is based on. And these are the social traits I'm sharing with people. I'm sharing with people as the nine good social traits and the five bad social traits that I'm now teaching children via Respect Exchange. Okay, hopefully that all makes sense. And have a great day.